Hello, welcome to another video. In this video, I'll be looking at the power usage, the sound pressure level measurement, and the general operation of the machine after one year. Yes, I know the descale light is on. I have a new filter, more on that in a bit. Ready to go, but I won't be showing that process in this video. The user manual describes the process and it's probably the most difficult process to go through with the machine. It's also on the manufacturer's website and YouTube page. A coffee is initiated by pushing one of the two coffee cup buttons. There is a low cup and a high cup, representing a shot of espresso or a half cup of coffee. Oddly, the web page shows these reversed versus the actual machine, but it doesn't actually matter since both of the buttons are programmable for the length of the pour. takes about two minutes from first awaking the machine to the first shot of espresso. The machine is already cleaned and ready to make more. The machine stays active for an hour waiting for the next coffee or you can turn it off at any time by pushing the power button. Another feature of the Brera is its ability to easily make a double shot of coffee which is the process that is being watched now. You just push the cup button of choice twice and presto two shots of espresso or a full cup of coffee. I use this feature daily. This machine has quite a few customization options. I recommend heading to the Gagia website or the YouTube channel to get the most details since they really know the most about it. I'm only the user. A little side note, I have tried a lot of coffee beans in this machine and it's another major improvement on this one is the hopper has a little moving shaker in it so the beans don't get stuck anymore. No more poking stick on top of the machine. Also, my old machine had a ratchet and socket on it since it got stuck regularly. Uh, this machine hasn't had that issue once. So before we get into the next segment, how loud is it? Uh, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and uh, leave a comment down below. Look at that crema on the coffee, delicious and ready to drink. Next, we're going to take a look at some sound pressure level measurements of the coffee pot. How loud is this thing anyway? These are done in a kitchen environment at one foot from the machine where an operator would typically be situated. The sound level meter is calibrated with a Brule and Kayer 4231 acoustic calibrator. This emits a 1 kHz sine tone at 94 decibel sound pressure level reference to 20 micropascals. This is extremely important since this reference gives meaning to our sound pressure level numbers. The calibrator is moved from the meter and the supplied windscreen is installed. I don't expect any wind, but this is how the sound level meter is set up. The background sound pressure levels observed, in this case about 32.5 dBA. The coffee making process is started up and the sound pressure level of the machine is taken. The loudest part of the machine, by quite a lot, is the grinding beans bit. As you can see, it's hovering around 74 to 75 dBA sound pressure level. 
This is not a quiet machine. Quieter than a blender, but not by much. The A weighting scale is not entirely appropriate here since the human ear sensitivity at low frequencies changes as sounds get louder. The A scale ends up being used a lot for acoustic measurements though. In this case, the sound pressure level in my kitchen is this much, so it is what it is. If you want to know more about this, I can make a future video about sound pressure levels if anyone is interested. Leave a comment down below. The actual coffee production portion makes about 60 dBA of noise, with the majority of the sound focused around 125 hertz, with a lot of harmonics here in North America at least. In Europe, I would expect the spike to be around 100 hertz. The water tank is empty. Time to fill it up. As you can see in the water tank, I have a filter installed. This is a Seiko Philips branded filter, which fits this machine. This is the first complaint of this machine versus the Gagia Platinum Vogue. Uh, the tank is smaller and requires refilling more often. Actually, all the tanks are smaller. The grounds drawer is smaller and the coffee bean hopper is also smaller. The whole machine is actually smaller. <laughs> Uh, this is a plus or minus depending on how much space you have and how important your coffee is to you. The power consumption during the grinding beans is the highest, slightly above the rated 1250 watt rating. Here is a close-up shot of the machine making some espresso. Looks good enough to drink, and it smells extremely good. I want some now, actually. One of the issues with this machine is that it sometimes doesn't know how much water is in the tank and it will try to make a coffee without any water. It gets stuck and eventually gives up and asks for water. The issue is it grinds the beans first, so occasionally the machine will waste some coffee. For completeness, here is the grounds drawer being emptied. I usually just keep an old vegetable container around to empty the grounds and then dump it in a compost pile. I rinse the drawer out and replace it. The bottom drawer also has to get emptied at this time, and for some reason doesn't have any indication about this needing to happen. So best practiced to do both at the same time. The old machine had a shared drawer for this, so both got emptied at the same time. The old machine also regularly dumped water and coffee all over the counter, so this arrangement is actually a large improvement on the newer one. The machine still misses once in a while, so you still need to clean under the machine once in a while. Uh, definitely don't put this on a surface that can't get wet. Overall, I have to say that after one year of making four to six shots of coffee every day, the Gagia Brera has held up very well and is an excellent replacement for any homeowner duty aging or failing super automatic espresso machine. I recommend this machine for the best all arounder. I don't use the steam wand often, but it is functional. It's not a high output unit. If you want foam, I actually recommend buying a separate froth maker. If you're looking for a good, fully automatic espresso machine, then this is an excellent choice. Check out the Gagia website and their YouTube channel for more information and instructions on operating this machine. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Prendiamo un caffè?